What's up guys, Kevin Cage here with another crypto update. In today's video, we're going to run through a bunch of recent news for different alts. We'll speak about the market in general, such as Japan raising rates, China cutting rates, and the United States is launching a $50 billion treasury buyback program, aka liquidity in the bond market. So first up, starting with this organization, the Institute of International Finance, and this is a very large group with about 400 members from more than 60 countries. We got news that Hedera Hashgraph has joined this institute with the likes of Circle, Coinbase, BlackRock. We have IBM, Fidelity, a bunch of organizations. So we can see this institute includes a bunch of associations, firms, funds, central banks, organizations, etc. The leading voice for financial services industry on global regulatory issues. And this institute offers an independent source of global economic and financial research. So we can take a look at the member institutions list right here. We can see Fidelity. We have, as we scroll down, we're going to find Hedera Hashgraph right there. We have HSBC, IBM, a bunch of large organizations, including JP Morgan. Next up, for the XRP community, we know that all eyes are on a final verdict or final resolution of this multi-year court case. And Brad Garlinghouse has made the prediction that the Ripple vs. SEC case will reach a resolution or a final verdict before September 21st. So that's definitely something I'll be considering anytime between now and September 21st. And what's important, as we can see right here, the central ruling that XRP is not a security won't change. So really just waiting to see how big of a check Ripple the company is going to be writing the SEC. I know the SEC was looking for an insane amount. I see a fraction of that definitely being paid, but really just awaiting for the final resolution of this court case after this many years. We have Anders making a great post highlighting the infrastructure that's been built and put in place during this lawsuit. So we have Ripple Custody, Medico is under that umbrella entirely. We have on-demand liquidity, this has been live for years and it's proven to be a reliable product that works for its customers. We have billions of dollars of volume in XRP, of course I'd like to see more, but it's a real product. We have the AMM, we have the native lending that we've discussed, the CBDC platform by Ripple, all types of things. The sidechain with Zahao, the layer 2 Evernode with flexible smart contracts. We have the XRPL EVM sidechain. We have the MPT token standard. And then other pieces of news to consider like Xonix, the tokenization platform. We have Archax for tokenizing funds on top of the XRPL. All types of developments we are seeing building. I'm still keeping tabs on Peak Network. This is a deep in layer one. I believe they are still set to go live on mainnet by the end of September. So we've had a really crazy week, even a crazy past month in markets globally. Insane volatility in the FX market. We had the NASDAQ crash, a bunch of major stocks and indices. We also had Japan right here. They did raise rates and we had the Nikkei log, their worst day since 1987 Black Monday crash. So looking at the Nikkei just on the monthly, we can go down to the weekly and just look at that. So this is on the weekly time frame. They said that they logged their worst day since 1987, and it almost looks like March 2020. We also have this shared by Altcoin Daily. Breaking, the United States is about to launch a $50 billion treasury buyback program. $8.5 billion buyback in August, over $31 billion buyback in September, and $10 billion buyback in October. So we have these treasury buybacks to improve liquidity in the bond market. We can see the announcement date and the maximum purchase amount. And under operation type, we can see liquidity support, liquidity support, etc. And we can see the settlement dates listed. I've shared this before, but I think it's interesting looking at the S&P 500, the Russell, and then the total crypto market cap. So comparing since their 2021 highs for the S&P 500 drawing a Fibonacci retracement, we retraced up to the 786, a little higher than that. We pulled back below the 50% retracement. And then later on, we had a much bigger retracement into all time highs reaching the 1618. Looking at the Russell, this is a US small cap 2000 index. We can see actually doing a similar retracement, getting over the 786 and a massive crash. And if we look at the total crypto market cap, it actually drew a similar retracement over the 786 and then a big crash under the 50% retracement. So looking back at the Russell and also comparing the similar retracements of the total crypto market cap, we're in a very interesting position. And I shared this last month comparing the Russell 2000 versus the Bitcoin price charts. We can see during elections every four years, we had elections 2012, expansion. We had another election in 2016, expansion. Elections in 2020, expansion. And we're coming up to elections in November. And it's not perfectly correlated, as you can see, just moving my cursor, showing the exact dates for both. But it's very interesting that when we had that additional high in November 2021, that was also the high for Bitcoin, even though we had bearish divergence. Let me add the total liquidity index. I saw Crypto Kindy actually share this a while back on Twitter and he was looking at the Russell. So big shout out to him. I believe this is the indicator. I'm just not sure if I need to include the M2 money supply. Right now I just have this. 
I guess I can include the M2 as well for different countries. Basically, for the Bitcoin price chart and the entire crypto asset class, we have a correlation of global liquidity increasing. When it increases, we typically get another cycle like we've seen over the past 10 plus years, and we're in a very similar spot. So basically, we need global liquidity, some type of catalyst, some type of injection of liquidity. And here's comparing the Russell 2000, we can see something similar. We had an injection of liquidity and also the Russell went up and then it came back down and we've been trending in a similar position, similar to Bitcoin as well. So we can kind of size that up. So looking at the Bitcoin monthly price chart, no change. If you've watched my videos over the past month, you've seen this trend line. I only had two points of contact and we just got that third point of contact. So basically all eyes are on Bitcoin specifically for this monthly candle. Because by the end of this month, I definitely want to see Bitcoin maintain monthly candle bodies closing above this eight month EMA around 57,600. And one last thing before we dive into more recent news. So I know we've covered Bitcoin dominance enough in depth, and I also am focused on BVOL. We've shared this all year Bitcoin's historical volatility index. So looking at the previous cycle tops, 2021, 2017, we we're anywhere from 50 to even over 100%. And the BVOL has been climbing a little bit from 14 up to over 24 now. We can see the middle line, which is very important across to get that momentum to be a lot higher and for BVOL to go up. And you may have noticed some of the bigger dramatic price swings that the Bitcoin price chart is doing, and we can see the volatility index is increasing. So when this goes higher, we're going to see more volatility for Bitcoin, even alts. So basically, when BVOL is low, it just suggests that Bitcoin's price is relatively stable. And when it goes up, Bitcoin can have much bigger or more wild swings. And if we go back years ago to the good days when the old coin market was trending, it's been more than two years since Bitcoin's volatility index was over 50. So basically on the big picture, I expect Bitcoin's volatility index to get a lot higher compared to previous cycles. And something interesting looking at Bitcoin dominance, measuring the length when we got that first major crash, that first large monthly candle up until the next top right there, that was 1,371 days. If we were to take this length and apply it to the last cycle top and just look at this for expectations, that day is coming up in September. If we go down to the weekly, technically, it's at the end of August. So again, I'm not saying that we are guaranteed to have an alt season in August or September. I'm just sharing that this would be a similar length. Next up for Casper. So I've been waiting for the new contract for Prove AI to be added, and I think this might be it. We can see added one hour ago as you sort under contracts. We can see Prove AI, Grayscale AI. When I click the contract, it doesn't pull anything up, so maybe it's something with my browser or CSPR.live, but I'll keep tabs on that. We can see 89 transactions. So this looks really new, and just starting off with 89 transactions, I did just stop and post this on Twitter, and in this screenshot, we had 10. And I did just see Michael say that minting has started on mainnet, so we can see Grayscale AI. We've also gone through the Casper name, the Web3 identity, and if you guys caught the recent AMA on August 2nd for Casper in their Telegram, we already read through a lot of it in previous videos this past week, just saying that the recent security breach is not impacting development efforts for Prove AI, Actus, etc. And just emphasizing that Condor or the Casper 2.0 upgrade is still coming into 2024 with a bunch of updates in 2025. We also had Morgan Stanley to offer Bitcoin ETFs to wealthy clients. So we have over 15,000 financial advisors to sell shares of BlackRock's and Fidelity's Bitcoin ETF. The bank, which holds 1.5 trillion in AUM, made the move in response to demand from clients. Morgan Stanley held $269.9 million of Grayscale's Bitcoin trust as of March 31st. Next up, for XRP, so it seems we got some big news today shared by Ripple. Ripple announces partnership with the DIFC Innovation Hub to accelerate adoption of blockchain technology in the Middle East. We have Anders right here sharing Ripple having momentum in Dubai. So we did a video over this about eight days ago going over the DFSA, the Dubai Financial Services Authority, approving XRP for use within the Dubai International Financial Center. So this was last year, XRP, the first virtual asset approved by the DFSA. In just a few bullet points, we know that XRP received regulatory clarity in Dubai. Just a few days later, Ripple Swell 2023 was held in Dubai. And right here, 20% of Ripple's customers are in the MENA region. So regarding this news that just came out today, the new partnership will connect the next generation of developers with the DIFC Innovation Hub, the largest innovation community in the region and home to more than 1,000 growth stage tech firms, innovation companies, digital labs, venture capital firms, regulators, and educational entities. So very good to see some recent news out of Dubai. I know we've talked about that news for a really long time, so good to see some developments coming out. 
So this partnership will provide the means to drive blockchain and crypto adoption amongst early stage companies and scale ups as well as to introduce and position the technology with traditional large strategic institutions and their use cases. So I definitely hope to see this drive the adoption of the XRP ledger. And just highlighting this, Ripple the company has committed 1 billion XRP to accelerate development and new global use cases on the XRPL. Ripple has funded over 160 teams building on the XRP ledger, reaching 47 countries to date. And I really do think that this news from last year for the DIFC approving XRP for use within their center is a really big deal. So right now, Ripple's payment and custody infrastructure, we've seen this available in more than 80 payout markets, representing over 90% of the global foreign exchange market. So that's representing a huge portion, and it has that potential, but we need to see volume. And in live custody offerings in 20 jurisdictions, and we know that Ripple US dollar stablecoin set the launch to bring more liquidity to the XRPL. We also have Ripple X highlighting the Ripple X bug bounty program for anybody that wants to be rewarded for finding potential vulnerabilities in the blockchain code base and earn rewards for your efforts. And speaking of stable coins, we have Jeremy O'Leary. He's the CEO of Circle. Just thank USDC. We can see him retweeting this by Peter. Yesterday, stablecoins experienced the highest number of single day transfers of all time. USDC alone saw $36 billion in volume, 822 million minted, and 380 million redeemed. So looking at USDC.com, just thinking of USDC and also the Eurocoin getting regulatory clarity with Mika in the European Union. And I know the stablecoin market cap prediction seems absolutely crazy to happen over the next few years because they predict for just the stablecoin market to exceed $2.8 trillion or even $3 trillion over the next few years. And that's larger than the entire crypto asset class today. But when you consider recent regulation, you have all these companies, you have exchanges with stable coins, you have PayPal with stable coins, we have the new Euro coin and all types of fiat currencies that are likely going to have stable coins, I do think it's possible. And just looking at the all time volume for USDC over $15 trillion, imagine what other stable coins could do in the future, although USDC is without a doubt one of the biggest. And this is natively on a bunch of blockchain networks today. So imagine other stable coins being natively built on more blockchains. So it really could bring a lot of liquidity in the future, and that opens the doors to institutional DeFi. And looking at DeFi Llama, TVL, we are down. We are nowhere near our previous highs. And just looking at the stablecoin market cap today, over $160 billion. With those predictions over the next few years, even if you think it's crazy, to exceed $2.8 trillion alone. And that's just discussing the potential of the stablecoin market cap. There are a bunch of other reasons why I'm in the crypto asset class. So anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's video. We have the Fear and Greed Index at 29, awaiting for signs of life in a variety of assets. A lot of altcoins are below their 50-week moving average. That's an important level to reclaim, and I believe a variety of assets are going to recover. It's just a matter of when. If you've experienced a full crypto cycle before, a full bear market, and a full bull run, you know that there's different strategies that work based on where we're at. During bullish cycles, that's the time when liquidity and volume is higher, you can make a lot of moves, you can find easier trade setups, etc. And then there are moments like today where the market is a liquid, it's ranging, and it's all about capital preservation. Emotions are high, retail investors are tired of waiting, including myself, and I'm just waiting for another cycle to take place because the structure is still holding, so that's the way I'm playing it. If you enjoyed this video, please consider hitting the like button and sharing your thoughts down below. As always, you can find all links, including resources for charting, trading bots, platforms, wallets, portfolio trackers, and exclusive discounts in my link tree at the top of the video description. Thanks for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one.